General medical conditions, common infectious diseases, viral conditions. The rhinovirus is also known as the common cold. For the etiology, there are over a hundred different rhinoviruses. These are transmitted by either direct or indirect contact, such as touching a contaminated article. The signs and symptoms of a rhinovirus begins with a scratchy or sore throat. Oftentimes, people will feel stopped up and have watery discharge from the nose, and sometimes there is sneezing. A second batch may produce thickened, yellow nasal discharge, watering eyes, a mild fever, sore throat, headache, malaise or fatigue, myalgia, which is muscle pain, and a dry cough. Other common conditions include laryngitis, tracheitis, acute bronchitis, sinusitis, and otitis media. The management for the rhinovirus is symptomatic treatment. This condition may last 5 to 10 days or possibly even longer. Non-prescription cold medications are used to treat the symptoms. Individuals are encouraged to eat a balanced diet and consume at least 8 ounces of water every hour. Avoid emotional stress and extreme fatigue. Infectious mononucleosis. This is caused by the Epstein-Barr virus. It's transmitted by saliva by oral pharyngeal routes. Mono typically has an incubation period of four to six weeks. The signs and symptoms of mono initially may include headache, malaise, and fatigue. Within three to five days, typically individuals will have a fever, swollen lymph nodes, and a sore throat that feels like it's the worst sore throat they've ever had. As far as participation in sports, no participation in any contact or collision sport should occur. Mono has a complication of an enlarged spleen, and therefore there is a potential to rupture this enlarged spleen with sport participation. If the spleen and the liver are normal, then limited physical training for three weeks after the onset of illness is allowed. As long as the spleen and the liver stay normal, then strenuous exercise and return to contact sports can occur after another one to two weeks. Approximately 50 to 70 percent of individuals who test positive for mono will experience an enlarged spleen. 10 to 15 percent will have jaundice, a skin rash, or puffy eyelids. The management for infectious mononucleosis is supportive in symptomatic treatment. Acetaminophen can be used for headache fever, and malaise. German measles, also known as rubella. This can cause congenital heart defects in an infant if acquired by a mother in the first trimester of pregnancy. Therefore, most mothers are expected to get a titer for a rubella shot during pregnancy. The clinical duration is one to five days. The transmission is through nasopharyngeal droplets or direct contact with throat and nasal secretions from an infected person. The incubation period is 12 to 23 days. The signs and symptoms of rubella include a light rash on the face that spreads to the trunk and the extremities, a low-grade fever, and enlarged lymph nodes. The management antibiotics are ineffective in the care of rubella. Acetaminophen or ibuprofen can be provided to relieve minor discomfort. We can prevent this in early childhood by using immunizations. We have an MMR vaccine that allows us to treat for measles, mumps, and rubella. Measles, rubella. The transmission of rubella occurs through airborne droplets or direct contact with nasal secretions or throat secretions of an infected person. This is a common childhood disease and the incubation time is 10 days following exposure. The signs and symptoms are typically including sneezing, nasal congestion, coughing, malaise, photophobia, spots in the mouth, conjunctivitis, and elevated fever. A rash then appears and causes itching. The management for measles is inoculation with an MMR vaccine at 12 to 15 months and 4 to 6 years of age. Bed rest, isolation in a dark room, the use of antipyretic medication and anti-itching medication can help treat symptoms.
In 2019, the CDC confirmed 981 measles cases in the United States, which was the highest count since 1992. The measles or rubella virus was declared eliminated in 2000. 26 states reported cases to the CDC. The occurrences were largely linked to travelers who returned from countries with large measles outbreaks. The majority of those infected in the United States were unvaccinated. The mumps. The transmission is airborne droplets or direct contact with saliva of an infected person. This typically appears within 25 days following exposure. Signs and symptoms of mumps include malaise, headache, chills, and a moderate fever. Pain in the neck progresses to swelling of the glands, which may last for up to seven days. Pain in the jaw motion and swallowing are also common. Increased or decreased saliva production may occur. The management immunization with an MMR vaccination should be done in childhood. If mumps occurs, the patient should be isolated while contagious, confined to a bed, and given a soft diet. Analgesics and cold applications should be used to control swelling. Heat may be used later. Mumps is a rare condition that has a potential complication of infertility, particularly in male patients, especially if this happens at an older age. Poliomyelitis, also known as polio. This is the inflammation of the gray matter of the spinal cord. This often results in spinal and muscle paralysis and is spread by direct contact via fecal-oral and oral-to-oral -oral routes. There is no treatment for polio except analgesics to relieve the pain. There are now polio vaccines that have largely eradicated polio in the United States. Chickenpox, also known as varicella. The transmission of chickenpox is through direct contact with respiratory secretions and fluid from lesions. The incubation period is 14 to 16 days. The signs and symptoms typically include fever, headache, a rash profuse on the trunk and oral mucosa that leads to blisters that, that turn cloudy and become encrusted with scabs. The clinical duration of varicella is one to two weeks. Chicken pox are caused by the varicella zoster virus, also known as herpes zoster. This may occur at any age, but it is more common in children. The incubation time is 13 to 17 days following exposure. However, individuals are contagious for 11 days, including 5 days prior to the first sign of a rash, which makes the spread of this condition extremely dangerous. The signs and symptoms include slight elevation in temperature, followed by an eruption of a rash. The rash progresses from a macula to a papule, then vesicles and crusts over two to three days. The rash typically will begin on the back and the chest and may last for two to three weeks. The management for chickenpox includes administering the varicella zoster immunoglobulin within 96 hours of exposure to prevent clinical symptoms in normal healthy children. Aclavir medications should be administered to adolescents and adults within 24 hours of exposure. Anti-itch medications can help prevent scratching. If individuals scratch these spots, it may result in scarring. Viral meningitis. The greatest risk is in poor hygiene measures. For example, for example in the athletic setting, water bottles that are not kept clean and germ-free. Signs and symptoms of viral meningitis include fever, headache, nausea, vomiting, neck pain and stiffness, also known as neutral rigidity, muscle pain, decreased coordination, malaise, photophobia, and altered mental status. This condition is very dangerous and requires immediate physician referral. There should be no return to physical activity for at least two to three weeks after the ease of symptoms.